you feel you're wasting time clicking through menus, hunting for tools, hacking your way through Pro Tools, but then you've seen other engineers flow through their sessions so smoothly, so productively, so lightning fast that it seems like they're some kind of audio wizard. In this video, I'm gonna show you how that's possible with a set of Pro Tools key commands that you need to know. Because remember, you investing these few minutes now will save you countless hours of technical slowdown. So I don't want that to happen to you. Let's dive straight in. Let's start with initial setup. The first thing you'll have to do is turn on this button here. This is your keyboard focus mode. And when that's yellow, that means it's on. And that means these commands are gonna work. You have to have that enabled. And the next thing to mention is I'm on a Mac. So with some of these, if you're on a Windows, you'll need to substitute Command with Control and uh, Option on Mac with Alt on Windows. So something to note before we get started. Our first command is gonna be new track. So that's Shift Command N. This is gonna allow us to bring up this track dialog window. Now we can use Command and Arrow to toggle left and right between mono and stereo and command and up and down arrow to toggle the track type. Now to add another track, you can click this plus, but the faster way to do it is to go command N while this is open. And that's gonna allow you to open up more tracks, which then you can again, use the arrows to toggle through. Command left arrow, command right arrow, command up and down. So let's start this by creating three mono tracks as an example. Now what we'll need to do is group a couple of the tracks. For our next example, we'll go Command G. This is gonna bring up our group window, Command G. In this group are the two tracks I had highlighted, I'll hit OK. Let's go to our mixer page. I'll show you how to do that command in a second. But you'll see here that these are grouped together. There are times when I'm gonna to wanna to change the balance between them and not edit them together. So I'll hit Shift Command G to toggle the group off. That's Shift Command G. Then I can turn Shift Command G back on and then they're back together acting as one. So that's toggling groups on and off. The next thing we'll do is we'll grab this track here and we'll duplicate it with Shift Option D. This is gonna bring up our duplicate tracks window. Now, if you just wanna duplicate the track in its settings but not carry the audio to the next track, you can uncheck those boxes, hit OK, and we've made a duplicate. Now we want to probably use some audio for the next example. So I'm gonna delete these and actually go Shift Command I to import audio and I'm gonna import these drums just for these example. So I'll hit open, I'm gonna bring them in and we'll let that process. Hit okay. And I'll show you how to edit these tracks very, very efficiently in a moment. But first, I wanna show you how we're gonna navigate. So to switch between this edit window with our timeline and our mixer window, we're gonna hit Command Equals. This will toggle between the two pages and let you switch back and forth while working on your session. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is when we hit play. So I'm gonna just hit play on these drums. Now, did you see when I hit stop, the arrow went back, the, the selector went back to where we just started. When I hit stop, that's spacebar. If I hit N, it'll continue playing from where I stopped it last. This is follow playback, N. Now when I stop, it's gonna continue playing from where I stopped. And I'll hit N again, and when I play, it goes right back to the same spot. So you're gonna be toggling that on and off while you work on your session, and it's much easier to do with N than coming to click up here all the time. Our next thing we'll do is a horizontal zoom in. So you can do this with either command, uh, a square bracket out and square bracket in, or a faster way is to hold option and scroll. That'll let you do a horizontal zoom. Now let's say we wanna zoom in just on one highlighted section. Let's say I wanna look specifically at this little part here. I can go highlight and then hit option F and it'll zoom in on that exact part that I highlighted. Now I can also hit option A to zoom back out to the entire session. So that's a really good way to zoom. To get up and down between the tracks quickly if we're making edits is P to go up and colon to go down. So again, that's P up, colon down. Next up, we're gonna change our waveform size. So this is not clip gain, this is just the size of the waveform. And you can do that by not just uh, having to click up here, but the faster way is shift option scroll. So maybe you wanna zoom in on something, get a closer look. I can use shift option 
scroll to do that. Now let's say I wanna change the actual clip gain of something. There's something in my track that's a little quiet. Let's say this is quiet. I'm gonna cut that, which I'll show you in a second, and I can hold shift control and scroll to bring that clip gain up or down. That's, the, that's a really fast way to do it versus trying to do it like this. Okay, so that's clip gain. Another way we'll navigate through our session is with tab to transient. So let's say I wanna to get to this note right there, that hit in the drums. I'm gonna just make sure that my tab to transient is on, which is this setting here. And when it's on, I can jump between the notes like this. This is really handy for editing drums. So that's just hitting tab. Now I'll show you an awesome way to navigate the session using markers in just a minute. You're gonna love that. But first I'm gonna show you a couple quick edits. So to split a track at the cursor, let's go here to this kick track, okay? To split it at the cursor, I'm gonna hit B and we made a split. Now to undo any of your edits, you're gonna hit Command Z. So B, Command Z. And if we wanna copy something, and paste it somewhere else, we're gonna highlight and go Command C and select a new spot and go Command V to paste. So Command C, Command V, copy and paste. Now let's say I wanna cut something out. I wanna make an editing cut and I wanna cut everything before. Most people make the mistake of cutting it, clicking it, deleting it. That's three clicks. I can do this all in one click when I hit A. I cut everything before. I can cut everything after when I hit S. Okay, so cut from beginning of clip to cursor A, cut from cursor to end of clip S. Next one is gonna be to fade at the cursor. If I highlight something and hit F, it's gonna create a fade. Did you see that right there? That's a fade. So another thing we can do with drums is maybe we wanna strip the silence out of them. We, we wanna take these hits out in between or maybe in a vocal track you wanna do this. Go Command U. It's gonna bring up the strip silence dialog window where you can kind of dial in your settings, whatever settings you want. Let's just pretend that this is what we're doing here. Something like this. Okay, just as an example, and I'm gonna hit strip. That was command U to bring that up. And now while all these are highlighted, I can hit command F and this will bring up our batch fade window with command F and I can hit okay. And what that has done is apply little fades between all of those edits with command F, that's to do multiple fades. Now let's say I liked what I did and I wanna consolidate this. You just highlight everything and hit Shift Option 3. It's gonna consolidate that back into one region. So that's Shift Option 3. And let's say now we wanna uh, loop a section. So let's say I want to just duplicate this track over and over and over. Maybe I'm working on a, a drum loop. So pretend that's a loop. I'm gonna go Command D. There's Command D to loop it. It's going over and over and over from the start of the track to the end of the track. And now that you know how to edit, you could open up some plugins on the tracks with some crazy hotkeys I'm gonna show you in a second. But first, here are the marker navigation commands I was telling you about. Now this is gonna be handy if you have a keypad with a number pad, but I'll still show you how to do this. So let's play and let's say this is our uh, verse right here. We can hit plus to create a marker or as the song is playing through, you can hit enter on your numeric keypad. And it'll create a marker for you. So let's actually create a couple of markers here. And as an example, I'll name this one verse. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna hit enter, chorus, right? It, just a quick example. Now watch what I can do if I open up a marker window for song navigation. This is also called memory locations. And if you don't have the keypad, which we will do command five to bring this up on, you can also go up to window and select it right there. This brings up memory locations. You can have this open in the corner of your session like this. And so by opening this window up, I can actually jump between the sections of my song by just clicking on the marker here. And I can listen to my chorus, my verse, my bridge, whatever markers I put in. How cool is that? All right, friend, it's almost as cool as the automation <laughs> commands I'm gonna show you in a sec, uh, right after these plugin commands. So first let's open up some plugin windows. So just on this kick, let me open a Pro Q3. I'm gonna open a CLA 76, just a couple plugins. Now here's the thing, did you see how once I opened a new plugin, it switched it out for me and I clicked back and forth? Maybe I wanna look at these plugins at the same time. Here's what we can do. I can click one and I can hold shift 
click another plugin, and now both windows are open and I can see and work with both at the same time. This can work for an unlimited number of plugins. So I can add another plugin. Let's add this C4 just randomly, right? I got to hold shift click. I can click them all and now they're all open. But let's say instead of me now closing them all out with X like this, which is going to take me a lot of time, instead you can close all the plugin windows with one simple command, which is option command W and they're all closed. How cool is that? Now, if we want to bypass a plugin, we're going to go to the plugin and we're going to go command click. Now, this is much better than going into the plugin and having to click this every time and opening up the plugin. So if you command click, it'll turn the plugin on and off. And another thing we can do is if we want to bypass the selected plugin and all the plugins beneath it. So let's say we got a bunch of plugins here, right? I can hit uh, control click and it'll bypass everything below the one I clicked. So it bypassed them all because I clicked the top one, but I could just bypass these by hitting control click there. I bypassed the bottom three. How cool is that? There's a bonus trick that I can show you, which is to remove all these plugins in one go. You just need to take a track with no plugins and save that as a track preset. Name that something like no plugins. And then when you go into your own track presets, you can go no plugins and remove them all in one go instead of you manually taking each one off. Now, if you're liking this, you gotta check out these automation controls because this is gonna speed up a lot of time clicking over here and clicking through these menus. So instead of clicking through those menus, the fastest way you can get to the volume automation is by holding control and hitting minus. This will take you to volume automation and back to waveform automation with control minus on whichever track your cursor is on. So let's say I put my cursor over here Notice it's not even selected up here. It's just my cursors there. I'm editing in here. I can do a really fast control minus and it opens it up wherever I'm on my cursor. Super cool, right? Well, check out this next one. This is control command left and right arrow. This is going to toggle between different automation modes. So there's mute, there's panning, right? Mute, pan, volume, waveform. And you can do that. And there's even playlist blocks, literally everything with control command left and right arrow. Now let's say we want to open up a plugin and we want to control some type of parameter within the plugin. Let's just say we want to uh, be able to automate the bypass button. For example, we can go control option command and select the parameter of the plugin we want to enable automation for control option command click on the parameter. Then we just click enable automation. And now in my automation window, I can actually control the bypass of that plugin. So as it plays, watch this. Turns on and off like that with control option command. And if I want to take it off, control option command click, disable. Now those are some automation things, but you need to have something to automate in the first place, right? So I should probably tell you about when you're recording, some of the recording commands. If you have a track you're recording on, let's say we have an empty track here, Let's pretend it's a vocal and you want to be in record mode. I'm going to hit shift R that'll record enable my track so I can record onto the track. Now I'm also going to hit shift I that's going to put this into input monitoring mode so I can hear myself when the track isn't playing or isn't recording. I can still hear the audio signal coming through. You can also shift S to solo the track. That's really good for when you're mixing or shift M to mute it. And again, those same commands that we turned everything on with are what turns them off. So shift S, shift M, shift I, shift R. And those are some really good commands for controlling these settings on your track. Now I need to show you some modes for tools and shortcuts next. This is really, really important. Instead of like uh, going up, to, up here to control grid mode and slip mode, Grid is when you're editing in bars like that. Slip mode will allow you to edit from any area in between the bars. You don't want to be clicking up here to do that. That's going to eat up so much time. Instead, just hit option four for grid mode and option two for slip mode. And we can also hit option one for shuffle mode and option three for spot mode. But I'll talk about those in other videos. So again, option one, two, three, four for your modes. Now, once in a while, uh, when you're editing, it Pro Tools, or maybe you click something, it'll go into a different editing mode. Like look at this speaker I got here. 
I don't actually want to edit with this because the much faster way to edit is to enable your smart tool. And you do that by hitting command seven. This allows me to have different tools to work with depending where I'm hovering over the track. For example, like here's my fade tool and my select tool and the fade in the top corner and then my cursor tool. That's all because I enabled the smart tool right here with command seven, it selects them all. You can also click up here to do that, but command seven is much quicker if you ever need to get into smart tool mode. Now let's talk about some cool commands for our tracks themselves. And these are some that I just can't live without. So to highlight multiple tracks, like you just saw, I'm gonna click shift and uh, I'm gonna select the track rather, and then hold shift and click on another track. And that will select all of these tracks, which I can then move together, for example. Now let's say I wanna unselect all of the tracks I've highlighted, okay? I'm gonna hold option and click on any one of those tracks. Again, we got a bunch selected, hold option, click. It unselects them all. But let's now say I wanna unselect only one track. I can hold command and click on that one track. And now that one track is unselected. Now here's the really cool thing that you can do, and I wish I knew this sooner, is to select non-adjacent tracks. So watch this. Let's say I want to select this track. I can click it, but now I can hold command and select a non-adjacent track like this. I can hold command, select another non-adjacent track like this. And now when I grab to move them, they'll all move together. Now I know these are a lot of key commands, so this is gonna be a lot easier for you with my free Pro Tools Hotkeys guide. I'll put the link at the top of the description so you can download that for free now, and it's gonna have every single command we talked about in this video, and I'm gonna be adding to it in the future because I think this video will have to be a part one. There's gonna be a part two, there's gonna be a lot more to show you about Pro Tools, so make sure if you use Pro Tools, subscribe to this channel. We're gonna help you out with speeding up your workflow. Hit that like button as well, for the YouTube algorithm. Leave me a comment on what you thought about this. And otherwise, don't forget to download that free guide. It's gonna be right there at the top of the description to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.